Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at One Elect, and today we're going to be looking at how to do NFS using blob storage and how to mount that into Windows and Linux. Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at how to mount an NFS volume from blob storage. This is a preview feature, but I think it's a pretty cool one. And I typically don't do preview features in my demos, but I wanted to look at this one because I thought it was kind of cool. It has a lot of potential to change a lot of things about how we use blob storage on virtual machines on Azure. Up to now, the only way that you can mount blob storage as part of the operating system file system was to use a technology called BlobFuse. And even this was restricted to Linux. You couldn't use it on Windows. So this ability to use NFS in blob storage is almost a game changer in many ways. I did a whole video on blob fuse already and I'll link that in the description below, but I really wanted to do this video on NFS even though it's a preview feature because I think this is a really game-changing technology which will allow us to use blob storage in many new ways that we weren't possible before. In other words, we're going to be able to use blob storage in a lot of the ways that we use Azure file storage for reading and writing things to blob storage and it will come at a fraction of the price of file storage as well when we're using the NFS file sharing system. Now, NFS itself is an old protocol. It's been around since the 80s and it's gone through several iterations. And the current spec is at 4.1. The current one that's supported by NFS on Azure, though, is version 3, which is perfectly fine for many use cases. But we're going to do a deep dive in how to set this up today and how you can mount it on a VM on Windows as well as use it in Linux. So you can see how the easy it is to do. It's fairly straightforward forward and then how you can use it to share files between a myriad of different operating systems without having to write any special code or use any kind of special utilities or use any kind of special APIs. The first thing we need to do is turn on the feature though. To do that, there's a couple of commands to run. You can do this in the Azure CLI or you can do this in Cloud Shell, whichever one works for you. I'm in PowerShell and I'm gonna be using the Azure CLI. Azure CLI will work in Bash and it will work in Command Prompt. It doesn't really matter where you run these as long as you have the ability to enable features. So to do this, you want to do AZ feature register and then tell it the namespace Microsoft.storage and then allow NFS v3. And this will actually run the registration. I've already done this, so on, this will come back as registered. The first time you do this, it's going to say registering. So it's going to take a while for this to finish. And to just show you the way that you can check the status of it is you can do AZ feature instead of register, change this this particular command right here to show, and that will give you the output, basically the same output, but it'll show you the status instead of invoking it. And it will say registering or registered. The next feature that we need to enable is hierarchical namespaces for premium blob storage. And you can do that pretty much the same way as you did before registering allow NFS v3. Uh, we just simply run the same command, but this one we run the premium HNS uh, feature flag right here, which is going to enable the hierarchical namespace. And this is needed for NFS to be usable as well. And like the other one, if you want to check the status of it, you can do show. And you'll want to make sure that this is enabled for the, the subscription that you're going to be using. So again, if you need to use a different subscription, use the subscription um, parameter that you can pass in here by name or the subscription ID, or you can just change the default subscription and register it that way. Either way will work. So the next thing we need to do then is actually create a storage account once these are registered. So let's go over to the Azure portal and look at how to do that. Okay, now that I have my features enabled, I can create a blob storage account now. I'm just simply gonna come down here to storage and select a storage account. And then I'm going to walk through this wizard. Now there's some features on that we need to turn on here, or there are some tick marks that we need to check here to make sure that we're doing the right feature setup so that we can get the NFS shares available. So I'm going to first create the name and other types of settings I want for this. I'm going to select the East US region because it's available in that one. It's not currently available in every region. So we need to be mindful of that because this is a preview feature. So I'm going to call it Blaze NFS2 East US because it's available there. And I'm going to select premium for the performance and I'm going to select block blob storage. That's important so we can ensure that we're using this one rather than one of these general purpose ones right here. And once I have that set, 
I want to enable public endpoints for selected networks or private endpoints because there's very little in security and the way that this is currently implemented. So make sure that you do public endpoints with selected networks or private endpoints for network level security on this. Otherwise, you're going to be exposing data to the public internet with very little in way of security. And of course, we want to pick the VNet that we want to bind this to. I'm going to select the my VNet VNet in this particular resource group. And I'm going to put it on the default subnet, which is the only one available really. And that's fine. I'm going to use Microsoft network routing for this data protection. You can turn off and on, off, turn off and turn on these features. If you so choose versioning, soft release, et cetera, but we're mostly interested in what you can do on this particular uh, blade for configuring this. Under these options, first thing we want to disable is required transferred security, secure transfer required. Disable that because that needs to be uh, disabled for us to enable this NFS v3 down here. Next thing we need to turn on is hierarchical namespaces. And that's something that we did just a second ago whenever we enable that feature. And then we can click on enable NFS v3. And notice what that's going to do is disable the ability to enable secure transfer required. Now everything is set up here and I can now use this for NFS after it creates. So let's go ahead and validate it and then create our storage account. And we'll come back whenever this is done. Okay. Now that my resource is there, I'm going to go to my resource and let's add a container to this. So I'm going to add in a container here. I'm going to um, call it blaze container or something like that. Um, instead of von container, von container, I'm a container and create this. Now, once this is created, I'm actually pretty much set up and ready to go here. I just need to enable some features on my windows box and I'm going to do it on Linux as well to show you that you can mount both Linux and you can mount this on windows and you can share files between both operating systems using NFS. You could do the same thing with Azure files, of course, but uh, this is blob storage. So let's go into our windows box and I'm going to show you how to set that up. And then we will mount this particular container inside of that windows box. Okay. I'm on a VM that I have in the same VNet as I do my storage account. So the first thing I need to do is enable a feature on my particular windows install here. And to do that, I'm going to come over here to my control panel and I'm going to come over here to my programs and features. And then I'm going to add in a turn off windows features on and off. And then once this populates, scroll down and select NFS services. I've already done this. So you'll want to check client for NFS right here. And once you've checked that, then it will install the NFS client and you will be good to go. And you, once you can go through that, it doesn't take very long to do. It's only about five seconds to actually enable that even on a modest VM like this one is. And once that feature is enabled, there's a few commands that you'll want to run to make sure that you have right access to this. To do that, let's open up PowerShell. And you'll want to use PowerShell because basically what not power and sleep, uh, you want to use PowerShell. The reason why is the PowerShell feature or commandlet that we want to use here enables us to have read and write access to those shares. And these commands basically just change the UUID and the GUID for the user that is going to be logging in to whatever that NFS share is. So the command you will want to do here is uh, impopulate is this one right here, new item property. And then this is the path within the registry. And then you say dash dash anonymous UUID property type D word value zero. And I'll put these commands in the description below so you can run them. I've already run this. So it says property value already exists. And then there's another one that you need to do for the GID as well which is this one right here. And it's going to give me the same error, but basically it's the same uh, property name minus U plus G right there and UID and GID. And that will allow you to have a user that is basically root and that will enable you to read and write from the file share. So once you have those run, you are ready to actually mount the actual drive into your windows box. So let's get that command up and I'll show you how to build it. Okay. I'm back here in my VM and I have on my text editor open here and I've got it set up to where I have a command that I want to run inside of command prompt. I'm using the text editor here to make the font a little bit easier to read. And the 
particular command I need to run is mount. I'm going to run this in command prompt, not inside of PowerShell, because this command is not available inside of PowerShell. So it's mount dash O no lock. This is the, the host name for my storage account. So blazenfs2 blob.core.windows.net. Then I'm going to have the name of my storage account again right here, blazenfs2. This is the name of the container I created. And this last parameter is the drive letter that I want to use. You can use Q, Z, whatever you want to use there. If you just want to let Windows choose one, use star, but I'm going to use Q. So let's run this and I'm going to open up a command prompt and paste in this command here. And it says Q was successfully mounted on this particular URL right here. And let's just save this off right here onto the Q drive. And that's uh, just so I can say uh, that I can validate that I'm able to save something here. And let's put in uh, command dot txt uh, on Q and save that. And if I go back to the portal, I should be able to see this particular file, but to be able to browse this container, I need to add in my local IP address. If I click on this, it's going to give me an exception or an authorization error because uh, the firewall settings are such that I cannot access this. So to fix that, I can come down here to firewalls and virtual networks and simply just add in my local IP address here and let that save. And now I have my ability to get inside of that particular container and let's uh, make sure i save this again just for good measure okay now that is good and i should be able to see the command.txt i can't actually download this because notice what it says here the extension encountered an error provided by no provided no additional details if i were to come over here and come to download it would not enable me to do this because the API is not available for NFS enable accounts. Because this is using NFS, I don't have the standard APIs available to me as of yet. And this is still in preview, so you want to make sure that you understand that whenever you're doing this. And this isn't gonna let me edit, it might. Uh, I've never tried this before. It doesn't look like it's going to though. Um, and uh, not gonna let me edit this either because the APIs again aren't enabled uh, for this particular type of account. So again, there are some limitations to doing this, but let's see if I can take this and put it into a Linux VM and mount this and then see if I can read this file in a Linux VM that I was able to save out from a Windows VM. So I'm here inside of a VM and I have CD to the mount folder and I've created a folder called my stuff. You can do mcdir whatever you want to call it, you know, test, if you want to do that, uh, you need sudo to do this, um, or root, you can just log in as root. And either way, uh, you can create a folder that you want to use as your mountain point. So I can use my stuff or, or test, whichever one you want to use for your particular, uh, mount here. Now, to mount this, what you need to do then is supply a mount path as well as the specs for your actual mount command. In this case, I'm using something that looks a lot like what I did for my Windows instance, where I have mount and then I have no lock again here specified and dash O and again, version three for the protocol and security is provided by the system. And here I have my storage account name. This is important here. So storage account name dot blob dot port windows dot net. And then I have my storage account name again right here. And this is the name of the container that I'm going to mount. Now, the first thing I need to do though, to make sure that this will work is run, run it as sudo because you can't mount unless you're a root level user on Linux or you have the permissions to do so. Um, so I'm going to run this and everything should mount up. Now, if all goes well, I put this in my stuff. I should be able to see that file that I created in my windows demo, um, CD, my stuff, not my stuff and do an LS on there. And there's that command that I had in my windows demo. Let's cat that guy just to see that we got it. So that's the actual command I used to mount it on windows. So you can see that I have a working file share between a windows and a Linux VM on Azure using blob stored to back it using the NFS protocol to basically act as bridge between those two. So this is like, like I said, a lot of potential for a lot of applications that are doing it in a more traditional manner that are doing file shares in a more traditional manner and don't want to have to use Azure file store. They can use blob storage to back a lot of the kind of workloads that they might be running. So a lot of potential here, but it's not quite in GA yet. So when this does go GA, I think we'll see a lot of use cases for it. And I have actually got a few of my own that I'm going to be using for my personal stuff. So until next time, thanks for watching Tech on Fire with Blaze. 
If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.